I went on a mission trip to Bogota, Colombia in March of 2018 and I thought why not take the camera, shoot a bunch of stuff and kind of vlog the entire experience. So that's what this video is. Um, the goal of the trip was to partner with a group of Colombians there that wanted to start a campus ministry on the major college campus in Bogota and our goal was to kind of go and help them and just start it by evangelizing to a bunch of students and just giving them a lot of context to blow this thing up and to really change the atmosphere of that campus by spreading the name of Jesus on it. So here's the video, hope you guys enjoy it. Next stop, Bogota. And by next stop, I mean yeah, Atlanta, Mexico City, then Bogota. Then Bogota. Hmm. Just landed in Atlanta. This airport is freaking huge. You just saw the airport, or you saw the video clip of the subway. It's crazy. It's pretty freaking massive, you know. I've been all over the world, never seen anything like it. Flight here is pretty good. Someone in my row actually didn't show up, so the girl next to me, there were three seats, but there were only two of us. We had plenty of room. So yeah, continuing this travel, and I'll see you guys in Mexico. Mexico City was easily the worst experience of my life. We missed our flight because we were confused and all the people we talked to made us more confused and basically spent like, I don't want to know, I don't want to know how long we spent in that airport, but it was a long time, but finally we're here, that's the good news. And uh, every clip after this is just going to be Bogota is going to be serving, it's going to be testimony, it's going to be people I meet, I don't really know what it's going to look like, but travel's over, we're here, time to go uh, serve the Lord. I thought no better way to start this portion of the video by really talking about how every morning and every night we would come together in the top floor of the hotel and get together and just worship, just pray, just seek the Lord together. And one of the really cool things about it is we got a team of Colombians here that are partnering with to build this campus ministry, but they don't really know English, which is fine. So the cool thing is when we're worshiping and doing songs, we go in and out of English to Spanish, back to English, back to Spanish. And it's just really, really cool because like we're all seeking after the same, the same Father, we're all seeking after the same goal, we're just all coming together, joining our faiths, even though we look different, talk differently, we're just coming together, we're, we're totally united, and it's just amazing for me to see, because obviously I would spend time alone by myself seeking the Lord, and believing for the things He wants to do in me, but it's everybody coming together, do it all together at the same time. Father, right now we lift up this university, and we just declare Jesus, God, I thank you that you love each of these students. Father, I just pray right now, Lord, that we would lay down our own fears, our own inhibitions, God, and we would let you move through us, Father. After our devotional in the morning, we would then travel to campus and do our outreach for the day. With the exception of a break for lunch, we would spend probably six hours straight on campus just meeting students and just building relationships and just doing our thing. We would, um, we set up in one of the big areas on campus where a lot of people, a lot of traffic was just coming through and we set up our banner for El Teste Dios, uh, the God test, to just basically just attract people um, as a way to like ask them questions like, hey, what do you believe about God? 
and just start the conversation and just slowly kind of use that to talk about the gospel, talk about what the Bible says about who God is, who Jesus is. And going to a busy spot on campus, everyone would be walking by, everyone would be seeing it. So many people just came by, saw the sign and just started asking, hey, what is this? Can you tell me? Can you talk to me? The strategy that we implemented was to have groups of three, sometimes groups of four, but we'd have one person who was Columbia, Colombian who lived there and could relate to them a lot better. There was one person from our team who both knew Spanish and English as a translator. Then there was a person like me who only knew English. What we found was the best strategy was actually to go away from that high traffic point and go to the other high traffic points on campus and to just really, instead of letting the people come to us, we went to where the people were. This is kind of like diversify our evangelizing strategies as a whole. Because this is me and because this is my video, I want to share the three major testimonies that I saw that God kind of put me in and God let me do. And the first one being, uh, is on the second day, uh, the Colombian in my group said, hey, you're the white dude. Um, you look different, so you're, a, you know, people kind of flock to you a little bit. So go do something like that to kind of build a relationship and kind of break down those walls. Then I'll kind of come in and I'll preach the gospel to them. So I was like, well, hey, over there, there's kids playing soccer. If you go ask them if I can play, then I'll go hang out, play soccer. Then as kind of their friends kind of come in, then you can kind of share the God test with them, share the gospel. So that's what we did. They asked them. And then I played soccer with uh, five Colombian students for about 30 minutes. And by the way, that was just a lot of fun in and of itself. And then their friends kind of started flocking. So then by, by the time we started pl stopped playing, um, Luisa got to share the gospel to probably 12 students all at that one time and get a bunch of contacts and just that one time in like an hour and a half total, like we got to really get really good in-depth conversation on the gospel. And I got to play soccer and just kind of have fun with the culture of the campus and just build friendships. And one of the guys, Sebastian, um, he actually lived in Chicago for a few years in his life. So he knows English super well. And even after the trip, I'm back home now, but after the trip, like I'm still messaging him back and forth. He's just a really cool dude. And now all these people at that one time, that one conversation are plugged into the campus ministry. And the second testimony that I want to share, there was um, a girl named Erica from Washington, D.C. that was in my group I was evangelizing with. And, and there was a guy that she was like, God's telling me to go speak to him. Like, we need to go speak to this guy right now. And his name was Manuel. And as the conversation started, he was kind of answering questions from an atheistic point of view, like, God doesn't exist. I don't believe in him or even it. And as we kind of kept talking and kept learning about who he was and his life and about his life, um, we learned that there was a desire that he wanted God to be real. He wanted God to love him, but he had never seen it in his life. And luckily God is real. Luckily God does love him. We got to really share the gospel. That really pierced his heart. That opened him up to so much. And by the end of the conversation, he got saved. He gave his life to Christ just in that one encounter, that one conversation. And he was even able to understand it himself and like, God, wait, do I really get a clean slate? Does like Jesus really wash away every single sin? Like see me as a brand new person? He's like, yes, yes, man. Well, you get a brand new life. Later in the week, we were able to start the discipleship process with him and, and take him through a book called The One to One, which is basically biblical foundations. and. He got to meet the Colombians there, and it's just an amazing story. He's, it's, at the be, it's the beginning of his, of his walk with Jesus, but it's amazing to see, like, he's just so excited. And, you know, God used me and used our group to go talk to him and lead him to Jesus. It was truly an amazing thing. And the third testimony that I do want to share, unfortunately, I, I don't have a lot of good B-roll for it. Um, I was talking to these two agnostic guys um, my group, you know, we were taking them through the God test and we were asking them all these questions and really the entire time, like, they didn't believe God existed, you know, and they were polite, they were respectful the entire time, but, you know, they didn't believe in God. So they were kind of disinterested, like, obviously we were sharing what the Bible said and, you know, sharing the gospel, sharing who Jesus was, but at the end of the day, they, don't, they didn't really believe in God, so it didn't really affect them. And I go over to 
And I kind of whispered to Vince, who I was with, evangelized and asked him like, hey, the only thing that's really gonna change these minds is like something supernatural that, um, that shows them God exists, that God's real. Um, it's like, well, dude, just believe. Just believe for something to happen. So I was like, okay, challenge accepted. So I really try to hear from God and really try to receive like some kind of like word of knowledge or word of wisdom on him. And like God spoke to me in that moment and said, hey, this guy's grown up in church, um, grew up Catholic. You know, he's been to these kind of services and events and he's wanted this quote unquote experience with me to like get some feeling, but just got, but Levi just tell him that I'm not defined by the experiences that we might have. Like I'm so much greater than those things. It's not a feeling like it's just a real truth and just tell him that. And like, I told him that and it really changed the atmosphere of the conversation because like, you know, they don't really see God as being personable and, and for me to receive that and know that about his life, obviously that's God because I'm just a human. I'm, I'm not a psychic or anything. Like God told me to say that, God kind of revealed that and it's not the first time I've walked in that gift, but it's, it was kind of crazy to see like the, what that can do because before they were not interested at all. And like after seeing that, it totally pierced their heart. It totally opened them up. Now we have their contact info and it's, you know, there's still an area of unbelief. So it's going to be a little bit of work to kind of, for the Colombians to meet them and kind of work with them, but like totally open up their eyes to God and all because of a couple little sentences God told me to say is kind of amazing. I had to make one small quick aside in this cool little vlog thing. Probably the best food I've eaten here in Colombia. It's called an empanada. Just a flowery pouch type thing. Got chicken and beef inside of it. Amazing. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that the goal of our trip was to start a fruitful campus ministry on that campus. So we actually, um, at the end of the week after meeting students, building contacts, we were inviting them all to this meeting at the end of our trip. That was their first kind of service as a ministry. And we started outside in a very popular part of campus to kind of even hopefully attract more people to what was going on and um, slowly kind of moved inside. And it was, we had at least 20 college students that we just met that week. And like a lot of other students like told us, hey, we want to come, we want to be involved, but we just can't go at this particular time on a Thursday afternoon. So it was like 30 to 40 students just from that one week that we met that wanted to be involved, uh, ranging from people who gave their lives to Jesus that week, people who were already Christian and already loved God and just wanted community to kind of grow in that. And even some unbelievers that were still wanted to come and hang out, but still like, not necessarily believers now, but easily interested, people that are open to meeting God. And so like all those students, we, we got them all together and kind of met and we had some cool testimonies from both Americans and Colombians. We got to play a couple games and split up into teams. And it was just really awesome to see because like that was the fruit of our week right then in that moment. And it was just, just amazing to see and it was also cool to pass the torch to, over to the Colombians to just really start their thing and we got to start taking these people through scripture. Leaving the tip top now. Final night of the trip. All of us fly out tomorrow. Pretty sad to see the whole thing ending. But uh, it's been an amazing trip. You've already seen my testimonies. Everybody else here has very awesome testimonies in their own way as well. Truly, I will never forget my experiences in Bogota, Colombia, and thank you to every single one of my partners who made this trip possible. If you're watching this, thank you. And everyone else watching this, Jesus loves you. Have a great day night, wherever you are in the world. Peace out.